Wen Chang here, inventor of the shoulder sphere. I today have volunteered myself to have a needle EMGs performed on my rotator cuff in the shoulder. This is to evaluate the function of my rotator cuff during three different sets of conditions. Shoulder at rest, shoulder during motion without resistance, and uh, thirdly, under conditions of exercise that is specifically designed to strengthen the rotator cuff with uh, my shoulder sphere versus the control group of uh, the thoroughband, the standard rotator cuff strengthening thoroughband. I don't know what the results will be, but we will see. And uh, I'm introducing Dr. Kishore Ranade. He's the uh, clinical assistant professor of neurology at New York Medical College. He has over 25 years of uh, clinical experience in performing electrodiagnostic studies. He also is uh, board certified in multiple fields neurology, clinical electrophysiology, electrodiagnostic studies, sleep medicine, and even medical acupuncture. So we're very uh, fortunate to have Dr. Ronade to perform my uh, needle EMG studies of my rotator cuff. So uh, what we are going to do today is insert a needle electrode, which is uh, sort of an antenna, in a couple of muscles of uh, Dr. Chang and see how the muscles are working. We're going to look at the firing of the motor units, and a motor unit is essentially a, uh, a, uh, uh, a collection of the nerve cells and the muscles that go with the nerve cells in that particular muscle in the rotator cuff that's going to get excited and start working. And we're going to have a screen display that will show how the muscles fire, and we have an audio hooked up to it so we can actually even hear as the muscles get recruited as more and more uh, force is exerted. So we're going to take this needle electrode. In technical terms, it's called a concentric electrode. And the reason it's concentric is inside the needle, there's another wire that acts as a negative electrode. And the outer needle that you see is the positive electrode. So when you have a negative positive, it's like uh, two pieces recording. And uh, this will be inserted in the muscle, and this will detect as the electric currents are being generated by the nerve in the muscle. The spine of the scapula, go right below it, it's a thick muscle, you have to go through the trapezius. He's got a thick, thick, yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, now we're in the infraspinatus. And how do we know we are? Well, we check the activity. Okay, that should do. So you can see at rest, the screen is flat because there is no nerve sending any messages to the muscle fibers to make them move. So then now we recruit the muscle. So you can even abduct. There you go. And then you can see that it starts firing. Now do it less, very little. Rest, 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 rest. Okay, that was okay. I'd like to look yeah. at the screen. Yeah. So now you Very can, interesting. Yeah, you can actually get your good feedback this way. So actually, uh, let's do external rotation. It might be easier. Mm. Oh, look at that. Just stop. No, you're still firing. Let go. Yeah, no, that's it. So you see, any time you <coughs> abduct, yeah, you mm -hmm. can push. There you go. Now let go. Now just elevate. Now just elevate your shoulder. Oh. It's less. You see, there you're using the trapezius. This is to make sure we're not in the trapezius and we're in the infrasmal. Uh, spinatus, right? Yeah. So, okay. So we can just isolate it. You know, pull out, push out. Yeah. Push, 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 push. Okay. So there you have it, right? So this is infraspinatus, normal muscle. And at rest, there is no firing. And usually what we do when we are actually studying, doing EMGs on people, we like to get an audio because often, believe it or not, if there's any abnormal signals, they have a, such a characteristic audio signature, and the human brain is better at detecting noise changes than visual changes. So this is how a normal sound would be. Okay, rotate external. Push. Right. And if there's any dropout in motor neurons, so there's some nerve cells that are not working or some muscle fibers are damaged, you can actually hear the interruption in that sound. And after you've trained on this a while, you can actually close your eyes, put a needle in the muscle, and know exactly what the problem is. Because the audio uh, recognition uh, is so quicker. Um, okay.
Okay, this is a totally at rest, neutral position. And then I'm going to start to do the uh, shoulder sphere. So you can see there is a distinct pattern of firing. This muscle, you can say, is firing at a rate of about maybe six to seven hertz. Turn around. Wait. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something. Do it again. Uh, I'm check. So this is a time base of 100 milliseconds. So if you can fire, so it stays right here. Right. You're firing at 10 hertz. Mm -hmm. If you come here, you're going at 12 hertz. As it goes there, you're going maybe at right. six or seven hertz. Right. Okay. right. So, so that's just, just, just I decrease the the, the, right. the velocity of my RPM. Right. And, and this is you'll see this. So these are the muscles firing, stopping, firing, stopping, firing, stopping, firing. Mm -hmm. So it's not a continuous thing. Right. But you get an interruption on off on off right. on off. And now I'm resting. So the muscles firing. So yep. that demonstrates in position number two, it also hits the infraspinatus. So in order to keep it spinning. All the energy is derived from the rotator cuff because the function of the elbow only goes up and down. As you notice that the wrist is locked in position, so I cannot cheat by movement of the wrist. Alright, so now I'm going to position number three, that will be the forward and forward plane. So now this, of course, is going to be engaged at rest because it is working to keep, uh, you know, Oh, is that supported? Uh, uh, supported. Even if you support it's it. Still going both? You know. mm -hmm. That also fires it. So position three also fires the infraspinators. This is position number four. Also hits it. Yeah. What is the uh, hertz? This is where we're doing uh, less. We're moving to the left, so I would say it's about five to six. Not so easy. It's the hardest. That's the hardest. Yeah. Yes. And the position number five, way What's out it? here. Okay. Go ahead. You can definitely do it faster. And then the pendulum, where the arms totally dangle, where it's the, no motion. Go ahead, just move here all of it. Good, right there. All right, so now. The, uh, what's the RPM? Uh, you're doing about seven, six, seven. Seven hertz. I'm doing that about so maybe uh, 400 RPM for the, uh, the for the rotating ball. Good to go. Okay, so this is a resting position. I'm going to do a very standard rubber band exercise that specifically train the rotator cuff. Just one exercise, the so-called external rotation exercise. This is the elastic band that's commonly used in uh, physical therapy and in training purposes. One inch of distraction is approximately one pound. So I'm exerting a total of about uh, 15 pounds of force as I go through my external rotation. The other exercise would be an active diagonal exercise. <laughs> As the arm goes in front of the body, diagonally. It's about a good 20 pounds of force. Okay, so, so this is a, a just movement of the arm. Without the rubber band. 
And now I'm going to move along with the spinning rotation, the dynamic move of the shoulder sphere. And you can see the rapid firing, activation and deactivation. And then now I'm going to do the diagonal active. At rest, this is a test in the infraspin. This is a using the body blade, a very common device used in the physical therapy and the training tool. Very good device. Just want to see how this uh, dynamically works out compared to the other. So this is that position number one. And you can see the infraspinate is fine as well. is a little more because the waveforms are traveling to the right. So I would say it's easier than the sphere because you're getting more RPMs. More RPM. Yeah. And then do the external rotation for the dynamic move. Diagonal. So, so, so Dr. Riley, so you can explain the, the Hertz difference between the body yeah, blade and so the So with the body blade, you were able to achieve uh, more in the range of 11 to 12 Hertz, whereas the sphere you couldn't go beyond seven to eight at the most. And I think the sphere is harder uh, to recruit. And I think the reason may be that when you're using the body blade, you have other muscles to assist you besides infraspinatus. Whereas with the sphere, you're just isolating the infraspinatus, so it has to do all the work. Whereas in the body blade, you do get assistance from some other muscles so it can work faster. So that uh, goes on to the next study, where you would uh, see if I can, re I recruited my biceps. Right. Along with the use of the sphere versus uh, the body blade. Versus the body blade, yeah. Okay, here's the body blade. Yeah, it's better. You can see it's active firing of the biceps. And uh, into the, let me get down to the, uh, the neutral position. There's still activity in the biceps. Is that right? Yes. The biceps still is firing. Maybe a little less because now you have gravity uh, helping you hold it. So there is some activity. There is some, but it seems a little less than the other one. It's not briefer. So the duration of the activity is And then as I go into the uh, pendulum position, Extend the elbow more, maybe. So again, it also uh, recruits it. So there is some recruitment with the accessory modular groups here. But it appears that the body blade, the other, the other devices uh, recruit more. What if you just lock the elbow? The, when the elbow is locked, it definitely would recruit more. Will recruit more? Well, well, well with, the, with the elbow lock, it will recruit less. Less. So yeah. it becomes a less dynamic. But it's a less dynamic yeah. thing. You can't really. Uh... Right. So while it's uh, impossible to totally isolate um, a individual rotator cuff in uh, functional activities, you can do it in the lab, for example, but you know, when you're pitching, etc. Uh, I think the fact that it was much harder for him to fire the muscles with the sphere. Uh, with the same frequency as, let's say, with the blade, where you could do it easy, tells me that the muscle was getting more of a workout with the sphere than it was with the blade.